Hey everyone, it's Nick from Share Dividend. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about quotes from the best investor in the world, Warren Buffett. Before we dig in, I just wanna invite you to subscribe to this channel so you can stay tuned with what's going on in the world of dividend growth investing. The first Warren Buffett quote we're gonna talk about are about long-term investing. So uh, there's three on this slide, and the first says, only buy something that you'd be perfectly happy to hold if the market shut down for 10 years. This means that you're buying great businesses that are likely to compound your wealth regardless of what day-to-day -day fluctuations in stock prices are doing. The next Warren Buffett quote we'll talk about is, if you aren't willing to own a stock for 10 years, don't even think about owning it for 10 minutes. And the next quote I think is one of the most interesting Warren Buffett quotes because it really talks to his long-term investing horizon. He says, when we own portions of outstanding businesses with outstanding managements, our favorite holding period is forever. Warren Buffett is persistently optimistic when it comes to stock market news. And this quote illustrates this nicely. Over the long term, the stock market news will be good. In the 20th century, the United States endured two world wars and other traumatic and expensive military conflicts, the depression, a dozen or so recessions and financial panics, oil shocks, a fly epidemic, and the resignation of a disgraced president. Yet the Dow rose from 66 to 11,497. 11, Warren Buffett also believes that the work you do now rewards you for decades to come. One of his more motivational and I guess abstract quotes says, Someone's sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago. He's also a very patient investor, which comes out in this quote. I call investing the greatest business in the world because you never have to swing. You stand at the plate and the pitcher shows you General Motors at 47, US Steel at 39, and nobody ever calls a strike on you. There's no penalty except opportunity lost. All day you wait for the pitch you like. Then when the feelers are asleep, you step up and hit it. People often call Warren Buffett a do-nothing investor because of this attitude. You do things when the opportunities come along. I've had periods in my life when I've had a bundle of ideas come along and I've had long dry spells. If, if I get an idea next week, I'll do something. If not, I won't do a damn thing. Warren Buffett also believes that opportunities don't come along very often, so when they do, you have to take advantage of them. He says, opportunities come infrequently. When it rains gold, put out the bucket, not the thimble. He also says that the less decisions you make, the more apt you are to make good decisions. An investor should act as though he has a lifetime decision cards with just 20 punches on it. He also believes that getting extraordinary results is not necessarily about doing extraordinary things, but about avoiding foolish things. Buffett says, it is not necessary to do extraordinary things to get extraordinary results. Warren Buffett's one of his most well-known philosophical ideas is the idea of a circle of competence. And this is basically the group of things that you feel really comfortable understanding and working with. He says, what an investor needs is the ability to correctly evaluate selected businesses. Note that word selected. You don't have to be an expert on every company or even many. You only have to be able to evaluate companies within your circle of competence. The size of that circle is not very important. Knowing its boundaries, however, is vital. Another related quote says this, what counts for most people in investing is not how much they know, but rather how realistically they define what they don't know. Buffett believes there's nothing wrong with not knowing everything. He says, there's nothing wrong with a know-nothing investor who realizes it. The problem is when you are a know-nothing investor, but you think you know something. He also says, you don't need to be a rocket scientist. Investing is not a game where the guy with the 160 IQ beats the guy with the 130 IQ. Buffett believes that temperament and long-term investing are like really the two things that lead to success. He says, we make no attempt to pick the few winners that will emerge from an ocean of unproven enterprises. We're not smart enough to do that and we know it. Instead, we try to apply Aesop's 2600 year old equation to opportunities in which we have reasonable confidence as to how many birds are in the bush and when they will emerge. Buffett speaks a lot about competitive advantage in his letters to shareholders. He says, the key to investing is not assessing how much an industry is going to affect society or how much it will grow, but rather determining the competitive advantage of any given company and above all, the durability of that advantage. Buffett believes that it's not necessary to find companies that are going to succeed in a world of change, but rather find companies that are going to do well regardless of whether change happens or not. He says, our approach is very much profiting from lack of change rather than from change. With Wrigley chewing gum, it's the lack of change that appeals to me. He also says, stocks of companies selling commodity-like products should come with a warning label. Competition may prove hazardous to human wealth. One of Buffett's, Buffett's most notable characteristics as an investor is his focus on value. He says, long ago, Ben Graham taught me that price is what you pay, value is what you get. 
Whether we're talking about socks or stocks, I like buying quality merchandise when it is marked down. Buffett is a known cont contrarian. He says, most people get interested in stocks when everyone else is. The time to get interested is when no one else is. You can't buy what is popular and do well. With that said, his strategy has evolved over time so that he likes to buy quality businesses at fair prices. One of his most famous quotes says, it's far better to buy a wonderful company at a fair price than a fair company at a wonderful price. Indeed, it's really hard to overstate how important price is to successful investing. Buffett says, for the investor, a too high purchase price for the stock of an excellent company can undo the effects of a subsequent decade of favorable business developments. Buffett's strategy is often to buy a great company at a cheap price because of some sort of short-term pessimism surrounding the company's future prospects. His quote, and this is honestly my favorite Warren Buffett quote, he says, the best thing that happens to us is when a great company gets into temporary trouble. We want to buy them when they're on the operating table. Another related Warren Buffett quote is this. He says, smile when you read a headline that says investors lose as markets fall. Edit it in your mind to say, Disinvestors lose as market falls, but investors gain. Though writers often forget this truism, there is a buyer for every seller, and what hurts one necessarily helps the other. Buffett also believes that you shouldn't just stay irrationally invested in a stock indefinitely. He says, should you find yourself in a chronically leaking boat, energy devoted to changing vessels is likely to be more productive than energy devoted to patching leaks. A related quote says, the most important thing to do if you find yourself in a hole is to stop digging. <clears throat> Buffett has a very contrarian view on risk. While many people measure risk as volatility, Buffett believes that risk comes from knowing what you're, sorry, risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. He also believes that leverage significantly enhances the risk that an individual investor assumes. He says, I've seen more people fail because of liquor and leverage, leverage being borrowed money. You really don't need leverage in this world much. If you're smart, you're going to make a lot of money without borrowing. Buffett is notably risk averse. He says, rule number one is to never lose money. And rule number two is don't forget rule number one. Buffett also does not like to worry about the investments he makes. He likes to buy things and then have a sound understanding that they're likely to make him money over time. He says, when forced to choose, I will not trade even a night's sleep for the chance of extra profits. Buffett is also a concentrated investor. Certain of his stock positions like Apple, Kraft Heinz, or Wells Fargo take up a noticeable portion of his investment portfolio. Buffett says, keep all your eggs in one basket, but watch that basket closely. He also has unconventional thoughts on diversification, which is unsurprising given what I just said about his concentrated investing strategy. Buffett says, diversification is a protection against ignorance. It makes very little sense for those who know what they're doing. One of his most detailed quotes about portfolio management says, we believe that a policy of portfolio concentration may well decrease risk if it raises, as it should, both the intensity with which an investor thinks about a business and the comfort level he must feel with its economic characteristics before buying into it. In stating this opinion, we define risk using dictionary terms as the possibility of loss or injury. Buffett has also shared numerous tidbits on personal finance and just general life. Uh, one of his more interesting ones about career choices says, people always ask me where they should go to work. And I always tell them to go to work for, who, for, whom, they mo for whom they admire the most. A related quote says, I learned to go into business only with people whom I like, trust, and admire. It's really hard to overstate how much Buffett places emphasis on finding the right job. He says, never give up searching for the job that you are passionate about. He also says, not doing what we love in the name of greed is very poor management of our lives. Another related quote says, there comes a time when you ought to start doing what you want. Take a job that you love, you will jump out of bed in the morning. I think you are out of your mind if you keep taking jobs that you don't like because you think it will look good on your resume. Isn't that a little like saving up sex for your old age? A few other related personal finance and life quotes are, in the world of business, the people who are the most successful are those who are doing what they love. Another quote says, the most important investment you can make is in yourself. Do not save what is left after spending. Instead, spend what is left after saving. A related quote says, if you buy things that you do not need, soon you'll have to sell things that you do need. Buffett is also a voracious reader, reading all sorts of books about business and investing. 
He says, by the age of 10, I'd read every book in the Omaha Public Library about investing, some twice. You need to fill your mind with various competing thoughts and decide which makes sense. Then you have to jump in the water, take a small amount of money and do it yourself. Investing on paper is like reading a romance novel versus doing something else. You'll soon find out whether you like it. The earlier you start, the better. Buffett also believes that you should take care of your body so that it serves you well over your entire lifetime. He says, imagine that you had a car and that was the only car you've had for your entire lifetime. Of course, you'd care for it well, changing the oil more frequently than necessary, driving carefully, etc. Now, consider that you only have one mind and one body. Prepare them for life, care for them. You can enhance your mind over time. A person's main asset is themselves, so preserve and enhance yourself. There's no question that Buffett's legacy is going to be unmatched by most business leaders. And really, I think the reason why is because he's acted in a way throughout his whole career that lead most people to believe that he's a genuinely good person. He's ethical and he has integrity. This last section that we're going to talk about is on Buffett's future and legacy and I guess quotes that he said over time that have helped to build this legacy. The first is this. I won't close down a business of subnormal profitability merely to add a fraction of a point to our corporate returns. I also feel it inappropriate for even an exceptionally profitable company to fund an operation once it appears to have unending losses in prospect. Adam Smith would disagree with my first proposition and Karl Marx would disagree with my second. The middle ground is the only position that leaves me comfortable. A related quote is this, I don't have a problem with guilt about money. The way I see it is my money represents an enormous number of claim checks on society. It's like I have these little pieces of paper that I can turn into consumption. If I wanted to, I could hire 10,000 people to do nothing but paint my picture every day for the rest of my life. And the world's GDP would go up, but the, the utility of the product would be zilch, and I would be keeping those 10,000 people from doing age research or teaching or nursing. I don't do that though. I don't use very many of those claim checks. There's nothing material I want very much. And I'm going to give virtually all of those claim checks to charity when my wife and I die. Buffett also treats his employees well, saying this, if your employees, including your CEO, wish to give to their alma maters or other institutions to which they feel a personal attachment, we believe they should use their own money, not yours. His legacy towards his kids is also notable. He says, I believe in giving my kids enough so that, that they can do anything, but not so much so that they can choose to do nothing. Buffett also has interesting thoughts on history and forecasting. He says, we've long felt that the only value of stock forecasters is to make fortune tellers look good. Even now, Charlie and I continue to believe that short-term market forecasts are poison and should be kept locked up in a safe place, away from children and also from grown-ups who behave in the market like children. Another related quote on history and forecasting says, the best thing to do is to learn from other guys' mistakes. George S. Patton used to say, it's an honor to die for your country. Make sure the other guy gets the honor. There are a lot of mistakes that I've, re that I've repeated. The biggest one, the biggest category over time, is being reluctant to pay up a little for a business that I knew was really outstanding. Buffett also says that in the business world, the rearview mirror is always clearer than the windshield. And what we learn from history is that people don't learn from history. Lastly, Buffett says, if past history was all that was needed to play the game of money, the richest people would be librarians. As you can see, he only places a modest amount of emphasis on knowing what happened in the past. You need to be intelligent today as well. Buffett also says that people who rely too much on numbers and quantitative investing should be treated with skepticism. Here's the exact quote. Investors should be skeptical of history-based models constructed by a nerdy sounding priesthood using esoteric terms such as beta, gamma, sigma, and the like. These models tend to look impressive. Too often though, investors forget to examine the assumptions behind the models. Beware of geeks bearing formulas. Buffett also says that crowd thinking is very dangerous. He says, you need to divorce your mind from the crowd. The herd mentality causes all these IQs to become paralyzed. I don't think investors are now acting more intelligently, despite the intelligence. Smart doesn't always equal rational. To be a successful investor, you must divorce yourselves from the fears and greed of the people around you, although it is almost impossible. A few related quotes on rationality say this, nothing sedates rationality like large doses of effortless money. Failing conventionally is the route to go. As a group, lemmings may have a rotten image, but no individual lemming has ever had bad press. And then lastly, he says, what the wise do in the beginning, fools do in the end. Buffett also says the most important quality for an investor is temperament, not intellect. You need a temperament that neither derives great pleasure from being with the crowd or against the crowd. He also believes that 
A lot of the money to be made in the stock market comes from the silliness of others. His quote exactly says, you're dealing with a lot of silly people in the marketplace. It's like a great big casino and everyone else is boozing. If you can stick with Pepsi, you should be okay. Buffett also has a few quotes on just general investing. He says, intensity is the price of excellence. He also believes that investors should look for a few opportunities to make some money, not for individual opportunities to make home runs. He says, I don't look to jump over seven foot bars. I look around for one foot bars that I can step over. And he also believes that investing doesn't necessarily have to be hard. His quote says, there seems to be some perverse human characteristics that likes to make easy things difficult. He also believes that you need to be aware of what's going on in the stock market. He says, if you've been playing poker for half an hour and you still don't know who the patsy is, you're the patsy. He also says you need to focus on what's happening in the business, not necessarily on the stock price. His quote says, games are won by players who focus on the playing field not by those whose eyes are glued to the scoreboard. Now the playing field here is an analogy for the business and the scoreboard is an analogy for the stock price. He also believes that investors need to have some sort of stomach for volatility. His quote says, you shouldn't own common stocks if a 50% decrease in their value in a short period of time would cause you acute distress. He also has some interesting quotes on corporate management teams saying, I try to buy stock in businesses that are so wonderful that an idiot can run them because sooner or later, one will. He also believes that uh, business leaders shouldn't try to go for managing poor businesses. Is the, the best outcomes occur when great leaders take over great businesses. His quote says, when a management with a reputation for brilliance tackles a business with a reputation for bad economics, it is the reputation of the business that remains intact. He also has spoken a lot about the legacy of his father and the legacy of Benjamin Graham saying, I had a great teacher in life, in my father, but I had another great teacher in terms of profession, in, ter in terms of Ben Graham. I was lucky enough to get the right foundation early on. And then basically, I didn't listen to anybody else. I just look in the mirror every morning, and the mirror always agrees with me. And I go out and I do what I believe I should be doing. And I'm not influenced by what other people think. Another quote on management team says, Loss of focus is what most worries Charlie and me when we contemplate investing in businesses that in general look outstanding. All too often, we've seen value stagnate in the presence of hubris or of boredom that caused the attention of managers to wander. He also says, in the long run, management stressing accounting appearance over economic substance usually achieve little of either. Buffett also writes extensively about this idea of the institutional imperative, which is when corporate managers act in a certain way because that's what other corporate managers are doing. Here's a long but insightful quote on the institutional imperative. Buffett says, Rationality frequently wilts when the institutional imperative comes into play. For example, number one, as if governed by Newton's first law of motion, an institution will resist any change in its current direction. Number two, just as work expands to fill available time, corporate projects or acquisitions will materialize to soak up available funds. Number three, any business craving of the leader, however foolish, will be quickly supported by detailed rate of returns and strategic studies prepared by his troops. And number four, the behavior of peer companies, whether they are expanding, acquiring, setting executive compensation or whatever, will be mindlessly imitated. Buffett also says some interesting things about looking for who to hire, saying, somebody once said that in looking for people to hire, you should look for three qualities, integrity, intelligence, and energy. And if you don't have the first, the other two will kill you. You think about it, it's true. If you hire somebody without integrity, you really want them to be dumb and lazy. He also believes that every person should hire someone who's smarter than them. That helps to build a great organization over time. Buffett says, if each of us hires people who are smaller than us, we shall become a company of dwarfs. But if each of us hires people who are bigger than we are, we shall become a company of giants. Thank you for watching this video through to the end. I want to invite you to do three things before closing out of this window. The first is to email me a video recommendation at nick at suredividend.com. The second is to like this video and to leave us a comment telling us what you thought of it. And the third is to subscribe to our channel, Share Dividend, if you're interested in learning more about investing in high quality dividend growth stocks for the long run. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.